So, good morning or good afternoon, ladies and gents. Allow us to introduce ourselves. My name is Gabriel Amoro. My name is John Carlos Inabre. My name is Matthew Singzon. And today, we are going to introduce to you our project that may help millions of people in monitoring their health. So, we are presenting to you Ginhawa, an Arduino-based concentration sensing for detection of possible diabetic condition. So first, let us first dive deep into the background of our project or on why we choose to tackle this problem and what drove us to do this project. So first off, what are VOCs for or volatile organic compounds? Well, they are gases that are emitted from certain solids or liquids. VOCs include a variety of chemicals which includes acetone. And to continue, certain VOCs can be detected from the breath of a certain individual with disease, and they can serve as biomarkers for certain diseases. Uh, there are VOCs that are emanating from the human breath. So yes, and from individuals with disease specifically. So VOCs can serve as potential biomarkers, and these VOCs can be used to determine the physiological and pathophysiological conditions. The analysis of human breath for VOCs has potential for early detection and several diseases. And this includes diabetes, which we are going to tackle later. And lastly, uh, the analysis of human breath for the detection of volatile organic compounds is non-invasive. And since you're not using any kinds of uh, needle or objects that penetrate the human body. So this can be helpful for people who are afraid of blood or being punctured by a needle. So to continue, as we discussed earlier, acetone can be used for the detection of diabetes as it is possibly a biomarker for diabetes. We all know that acetone is one of the most common types of VOCs since it can be found in nail polish and many more. And it is also the product of ketoacidosis and, be, and can be found in human breath for people who are experiencing or, or who are suffering with diabetes. So we can use this volatile organic compound to determine if a certain individual may have diabetes. So, so what are the problems that our team wishes to address? So, well, one thing is that, well, it is the slow processes that are often associated in diagnosing a person with a certain disease, in which, in this case, is diabetes. And also, we want to address the invasive methods associating with diagnosing a certain disease. So, why is it important to address this problem? Well, to answer that question, in the Philippines alone, there are about... 4 million people suffering with diabetes. And according to IDF, which is International Diabetes Federation, uh, uh, there are the 5% of people are suffering with diabetes. And about 415 million individuals have suffered diabetes already. And the current available methods for diagnosing diabetes is only these methods, the HbA1. C test, fasting blood sugar test, glucose tolerance test, random blood sugar test, and the rest. So, what are the common thing about these methods? Is that all of these methods are invasive, which uses needles to puncture your skin to obtain blood, which they will then use to analyze the amount of blood glucose present in the human body. This is why we want to synthesize a portable, portable device that can measure acetone identify if a certain person may have diabetes in a short period of time using non-invasive methods. And lastly, the device must be portable, easy to use, and will be used to possibly detect if a certain individual has a diabetic condition. And our objective is to fabricate an Arduino-based device that detects acetone concentration for pre-detection, for pre-detecting possible diabetes. Here in the, our methodology part of our presentation, 
we can see the device in three different viewpoints, the front view, the top view, and the isometric view. Here in the top view, you can see the mouthpiece, mouth mouth which is detach detachable. In order for it to be sterilized, we can see the OLED. And then in the top view, you can see the LEDs and the button. So I'll explain how the device works. First of all, we need to press the button in order to turn on the device. The OLED will activate and then instruct the user to exhale, exhale on the mouthpiece for a few seconds. After, after a few seconds have passed, around five seconds, the, the, the Arduino will gather the data using the MQ138 sensor built in inside the device and calculate the concentration of acetone inside your breath, the user's breath. Once the calculation is done, it will be displayed in the OLED display and a, a fan with a motor inside the chamber of the mouthpiece will activate in order to cleanse out any residue of breath inside in order for the next user, next user's data not to be tampered. The mouthpiece will be detached and sterilized before the next use. For the data collection using a survey, we gathered 30 random participants to answer our survey, user satisfactory survey. We are tasked, we tasked them to answer truthfully the following criteria, criteria, which is aesthetics, functionality, and willingness to use. Uh, our analysis is based of Robert, Robert Rubinoff's quantify user experience and net promoter score formats. Next, please. Here we have a table showing the correlation between the amount of acetone, which is below, and what it may imply about the health of the user. Here, in the 0 0.8 to 2 ppm range, we can consider that as a healthy and normal individual. Around 2 to, 7, 2 to 70 ppm, we can imply that it may be an adult with on ketogenic diets. And around 70 to 1,000, 1,250 ppm, it may be a strong evidence of diabetes. Next. Continu continuing on the user satisfaction survey, we can see that around 23 people are considered promoters or they, they would recommend the device to other people. Uh, around five, five people are passive or neutral, and around two are, are detractors or would not recommend. This is from the 30 people we have, we have taken a survey of. And with the three categories, we assign them to answer truthfully. Uh, all three categories have above nine, nine out of 10 score, which shows that our device is appealing to the masses. We will also show you how we calibrated the sensor. So the sensor output is in resistance, this, which is this RS over RO in this, in this table to the sensor. So this RS over RO basically means the resistance, the uh, resistance, resistance output of the sensor. The greater resistance, the smaller concentration detected in the breath, concentration of acetone. The smaller resistance, the, the greater res concentration of acetone is present. So here in the graph, we can show the, what the table is showing. The bigger the resistance, the smaller concentration, smaller resistance, the greater concentration. The, the calibration method, this calibration is based off the manufacturer manufacturer's uh, data regarding the sensor. We just based that off that. For Ginhawa's cost analysis, you can see the substantial difference between Ginhawa's cost and the cost of commercial services that are currently available in the market. Ginhawa, along with its sensors and displays, the cost to produce one unit is $49.52, while the tests 
that are recommended by the NIDDK or the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases cost about $87 in total. Another type of service called Standard Clinical Diabetic Screening, which includes a physician, follow-up tests, and blood draws will cost the patient about $346. Other than that, all of these mentioned tests required blood to be extracted, which makes them intrusive in nature, while Ginhawa only requires human breath. This shows that Ginhawa is a cost-effective alternative to commercial services available that pre-detect diabetes. To sum up, the project produced an Arduino-based acetone concentration sensing device called Ginhawa that is effective, accurate, and cost-effective alternative to commercial services that pre-detect diabetes. It also produced a device that scored 9 out of 10 based on the users that were surveyed. So this is our references and after this presentation, uh, we are going to show you a video demonstration on how Ginhawa works. Diabetes is a chronic disease in which the pancreas is not able to produce enough insulin or when the body is inefficiently consuming the insulin the body produces. Diabetes can be identified by getting the blood glucose level in which the only way to identify blood glucose level is an invasive way. This is what Ginhawa aims, a portable, fast, and easy-to-use device that can pre-detect diabetes through only acetone concentration present in human breath. Everyone who is concerned on their health can use Ginhawa. It is a device that is built to monitor a person's health every day. This is Ginhawa, an innovation made for detecting minute amounts of acetone present in human breath that will scientifically predict if the user has diabetes. To operate the device, the user must first insert a removable and washable mouthpiece to ensure proper sanitation and disinfection. Next, plug the device using its cord to any power source that outputs 5 volts and has a USB port. It can be power banks, laptops, and phones with reverse charging. This will give power to our device. After plugging in, the device will automatically boot up and the screen will display the Ginhawa logo as you can see here. The screen will then display that the device is now ready to use. Next, press the button located here to start the sensor. and exhale normally through the pipe with the mouthpiece. It will then indicate how much time to exhale. After exhaling, the screen will then display the information needed to determine the possible chance of diabetes, such as the acetone measurement. Based on the amount of acetone present in the human breath, we can predict if the user has diabetes or not through scientifically tested and proven thresholds. During this time, the device undergoes a cleaning process of which the built-in fan removes the previous residue to ensure that the next result will not be influenced by the previous one. After waiting for about 30 seconds, the device is now ready to use again. 